Welcome, everybody. Super happy to be here with you this afternoon in Sydney. Different time zone as usual, but uh, what matters is that we are all gathered here today for spending a little bit of time together learning today uh, about creating impactful presentations. So I have prepared this little deck for you. Um, let me show you the table of contents for today. So the presentation and the webinar will be broken down into four sections. So we are going to start with uh, four design mistakes that are pretty common in uh, people designing presentations, things I have seen again and again, and that I believe if are corrected could really make a huge impact in terms of the, yeah, the, the way you create and deliver your presentation. So that would be the first section. Second section will be about creating wow slides, how to wow your audience uh, with your slides, with your work, with your presentation. And then we will get a little bit more hands-on and I will be um, switching back and forth between my presentation and the Canva editor to show you more concretely how to do things in Canva, in the editor. Uh, so we'll talk about presenting directly from Canva, not having to download your slides and export that somewhere else to present them. Um, and then we will talk a little bit about sharing your presentation with the rest of the world. All right, so um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Ronnie. I work in the uh, design school team, the, the education team at Canva. Uh, so design school is our education content at Canva, where we try to deliver what you guys need when you need it uh, and make this flow of information as seamless as possible for our users. So um, my specialty is to create educational content for our community. So uh, yeah, that's what we are doing here today, especially with Canva space. So uh, there will be space for Q&As as well. So after each of these section, sections, uh, I will go back to Jess and ask her to read some of the comments, some of the questions that we have received. So yes, there will be a lot of space for Q&As and also at the end of the presentation. So if you have a question, by all means, pop it in the, pop it in the chat uh, so that Jess can see it and she will, um, she will bring them back to me at the end of each section. All right, so let's uh, let's get started and let's talk about how to avoid death by PowerPoint. So death by PowerPoint is a famous concept that if you research that on Google, if you type in death by PowerPoint, you will see it's basically this movement of people who are trying to create better presentations, right? To avoid uh, boring people with your presentations because let's admit it, most of the presentations we have to assist, attend, uh, consume nowadays, well, it's getting better, but it used to be very boring and a lot of them are still very boring, especially if we are in a corporate environment, uh, in a lot of meetings, a lot of seminars, a lot of conferences, a lot of slides are pretty boring, let's admit it. So um, there's one thing that I like to refer to every time I talk about creating uh, better presentation, impactful presentations. And by all means, this is one of my favorite subjects to, to teach because I myself love creating slides and decks and presentations. And, and you will see this slide deck, I built it entirely myself. So I, I really enjoy putting them together and then seeing the impact it can have on the audience when I deliver the, the talk, the presentation. Um, but there is one piece of material that I once stumbled upon and that's old, like that's six years old already. And this is this deck, it's called You Suck at PowerPoint by um, a Canadian person named Jesse Desjardins. Um, so there's a photo of Jesse here. I've had the chance to have a Zoom call with him not so long ago, maybe six months ago. It's kind of like this thing, like don't meet your idols. But I met him and I was super happy. I actually did because he's super cool. Uh, and, and, and yes, so he created this deck called you suck at powerpoint i think i think six or seven years ago but this deck has received over seven million um downloads and views on uh slideshare so slideshare is this slide platform from linkedin uh so yeah a big buzz with this presentation and i extracted most of what i know about creating awesome presentations from his ideas so we'll be um I want to give him credit for most of the structure of the first 
section of this presentation because he is really inspired by him. So let's have a look at uh, what he actually created. So his original deck was uh, based on five design mistakes. Uh, but I decided to drop one because I thought th this fifth one is not that relevant. So I, I decided to keep these four. Uh, and I hope nobody is offended by this term visual vomit. Uh, I, I didn't personally coin that sentence, that term. I believe Jesse did. Uh, I decided to keep it on this slide and on this slide only because I think like we could find a more appropriate word, but I decided to keep it in order to respect his original work. Uh, so these are the four design mistakes that we will be covering uh, in the first part of this presentation. And the, the, the fourth mistake, visual vomit, I will rename that for all over the place and I will get to this and explain what it means. All right, so let's, uh, let's start with the, the first design mistake. The first design mistake that I see again and again, that's probably the, the worst one, uh, is that people are trying to, to cram too much information into their slides. So many presenters have that tendency to overcharge their slides with too much information. And very often that means that translates into too much text. Okay, so there is no point in creating slides that relate word for word what you are saying during your presentation, right? So that's exactly, I've done here exactly the opposite of what I'm telling you uh, to just illustrate this point, because indeed there's like your audience shouldn't be busy reading your slide. They should be paying attention to you, the presenter. Your slide is a support material. It should have um, way less information and it should visually represent your point, your concept, your idea. Or if you want to use text, then it's okay, but you will have to drastically cut on that text uh, because otherwise, if you are pasting exactly word for word what you're saying on your slide, what's even the point of being here? Like you could even send uh, your audience a PDF document or a Canva presentation. You are not uh, mandatory in this, in, in this transaction. Like if we cut you, we still get the full meaning, the full understanding of your message. So uh, just remember that, like that's really not necessary. That's a mistake I see over and over. And sometimes it's because the people who are creating the slides are maybe lacking inspiration or maybe they don't have time. So they just copy from their script, from their text, they put that on the slide, they add a photo and done. That's not how you should make slides. Uh, and remember like your audience doesn't like to read. Okay, so hitting them with the text heavy slide is, is probably the best way to lose their attention. So instead, what you should do uh, is to keep it short and sweet. So you should do the hard work of synthesizing, of summarizing your points into one or two powerful keywords, one or two powerful visuals even, uh, instead of dumping a bunch of information on your slide. So, um, you really have to learn that art of getting rid of the unnecessary, you know, like this is really crucial skill to, to master when you create presentations, like keep it short and sweet, learn how to do this, learn how to cut to the chase, go to the essence of your message. And that's what should be on your slide. And if possible, make it visual. All right, so um, if you have to present data, so I, 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 I heard you just like in the beginning, you, somebody was mentioning how to do research with Canva and present data. So Canva is getting better every day at, at uh, representing visual data in a nice way. So uh, we have this feature that I'm going to demo in a second. Um, but if you have data, don't just paste a graph on your slide or even worse, uh, paste a table full of numbers. I've seen that like in many, in summits, in, in conferences, like you have like an Excel table pasted on a, on a slide. Like, what do you want me to do with this? Like nobody will read your table, nobody will understand it or nor enjoy that table. If you're trying to illustrate a statistic or even like, uh, an, like a comparison between two different things uh, in, in terms of numbers or percentages, Try to represent that information visually. So um, now I'm going to show you how to do this. So for this, I'm going to transition here to Canva. So you should be seeing a copy of my presentation here. 
All right, so let me show you how to do this. If you are on the sidebar right here, the left panel, okay, let me open this first. Uh, you click on the more button and then you will find charts. So this is the one you are looking for. So you bring on your charts and then you have different types of charts. We have uh, kind of like progress circles like this, progress bars, progress semicircle, and we have all these icons right here. So this is a relatively new feature, which is super useful to represent data visually. Okay, so you have different types of icons that you could use. You could use stars, you could use anything that's that's here, basically. So we have men, women, I don't know why we have twice the men. <laughs> uh, we have babies, we have hands. So let's say you want to represent kind of like the same thing I was uh, displaying on my previous slide, 90%. Okay, so how do you represent 90% with um, these little guys right here? First, I'm gonna put this at the center of my page. So we have a few sliders, okay? So the total items, it's 10, okay? I can go all the way to 100, but for now, I'm just gonna keep this to 10. So you can basically input 10 here. And in the filled items, I'm gonna fill nine out of 10. And you see, it represents your uh, your statistic, your visuals, basically. That's as simple as this. You can add spacing. You can really style this. You can change the color, which is super useful as well. Uh, and then once you have this, then you can incorporate, you can build your design around this, just like I did on this slide right here. So this is something very simple, very, I would say, straightforward that you can start doing today with Canva by using the chart, um, the chart panel, like the chart menu in the left side panel uh, to represent your information visually. Moving on to the second uh, design mistake. Second design mistake is that you are not using enough visuals on your slides. Your slides are too text centric. They are too, yeah, not visual enough. So we live in a very highly uh, visual world. So that is nothing new here. So to quote Jesse Desjardins in his original piece of work, uh, you should deliver big punches with strong visuals. Your slides should be delivering big punches with strong visuals, meaning like it should be impactful. It should be really strong, a message delivered in a strong manner. That's what I try to do here. Uh, in this presentation. So let me go back quickly to my demos here. How do you add powerful visuals to Canva? How can we find these impactful images, impactful videos, or anything really that will add this, that will deliver these big punches? So I'm going to show you a few things. I want to show you how to search and add photos, videos, but also rich media in your presentation. Okay, the first one is something all of you who are quite familiar with Canva will already know. That is the search for photos. So you go to your elements tab and you are going to scroll here to the photo tab. Okay, and from here, I can search for a boxer, for example, if this is something I want to use. And then from here, you can also filter. So you can start using the filters. If you are, if you want to have only free content, pro content, static, animated, and then different types of uh, formats and even colors. So you can start looking for uh, images that contain a lot of red and I will apply this filter. Then I find some boxes here. Okay, so let's say I want to use this one here. So now I have an interesting image. Maybe I want to get rid of the background. If I want to do so, I can always use the background remover. That's a pro feature, but those of you who are pro users, and uh, by all means, like stick to the end of the tutorial, to the end of the webinar, sorry, to be used to doing tutorials. But at the end of the webinar, we will have a special uh, gift for you guys to, it's related to Canva Pro. So if you, if you are not yet using pro, but want to try, we will have something special for you at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the webinar. Um, so what I want to show you here is like how to get rid of this background to, to really emphasize on the photo. Uh, and also that's what I've been doing in this presentation. I've taken some photos that I found in the Canva library 
Uh, let me go and run you through my, my workflow. I will use the background remover, which is a pro feature, to get rid of the background. And then once this is out of the way, I will be able to apply some more effects on that photo. Okay, so I'm, I'm happy with this. I'll click on apply. Then I'll simply resize my photo as I wish. And then what I did on top of this to make it uh, feel like the rest of my presentation, I apply a special effect on it, which is called Duotone. Okay, so the Duotone is also to be found under the effects. Once you click, you have your photo selected. Uh, you click on effects and then you go to your Duotone here. I will, go, I will click on see all. And then I have different colors already preset for me. In this presentation, I use the pop uh, color. So now it seems to, to be familiar with the rest of the things you've seen in my presentation because yeah, I try to really stick to this visual style, this visual identity for my presentation. So this is what I wanted to show you for uh, photos. So how to work with photos. You see, I found it in the Canva library, but rid of the background, I apply uh, a special effect on it so that it looks consistent with the rest of my presentation. Something else you can do, let me get rid of this, is instead of adding photos, you can, you can add videos to your presentation. And if we go, um, back to my slide here that I created with uh, Chuck Norris delivering a big punch. That's exactly what I've done here. So this one right here, I've used a video, or actually it was a GIF and I will get to this as well. Uh, but then you have, you use that as a background basically. So how do you do this? Well, first let me get rid of the, the second layer I had here. Um, let's find a video. Okay, let's use this. So now I have the video, I will make it full screen. Okay, so I just stretch the corners so that it matches the size of my screen. And from here, I can do several things. Like, uh, for example, I can add some transparency. So for this, I'm going to, with the video selected, I go to my transparency button here and I will reduce it. So now I have a little bit of what's behind it. So this background right here, if I change the color of the background, I will have a different style, a different type of effect on this video because I added some degree, some, some percentage of transparency to it. So now if you play this slide, you will have the moving background and you can add some text, you can add some stuff over it. So that's the second thing I want to show you. And then the last thing I want to show you to really deliver these big punches with your visuals is to embed rich media. So Canva has you covered for this as well. So for that, you will have to leave the elements tab. So I will just clear this, uh, this search and you will go to the more tab, okay? And from here, you can embed media from different sources, okay? So I personally love to embed media from YouTube or uh, also Giphy. So Giphy is the famous GIF website where you have all these GIFs and the GIF library, it's amazing, uh, like GIFs are super popular and it's always good to have some, some stuff there. So for example, let's say I like this one, the little doggy rolling in the blanket, good night. This, this is nice. So I will, once I, I uploaded it to my presentation, I will work with it exactly the same way I was working with video. So you can add some transparency, to make it feel like the rest of your presentation. You can also resize. If you don't want to see the good night here, you can, you can really like resize this and make it slightly bigger. And like so, now you have a slide, which for example, at the end of your presentation, and this wraps up the presentation. So you have the little wrapping dog. So this is just a nice way to visually represent what you are talking about uh, by embedding different, um, yeah, different uh, uh, media, photos, videos from Canva directly. Okay, so if you don't find what you're looking for in the Canva library, because maybe you're still using the free version of Canva and there is a lot of choice, but not as much as if you are using Canva Pro. Canva Pro really unlocks all of the content from Canva and we are talking millions uh, even like tens of millions of uh, extra pieces of content that you unlock with Canva Pro. But if you're not yet using Canva Pro, you can still 
um, be using different stock image library or video footage libraries. But one thing you should really refrain from doing, and by all means, like try to, to be very conscious about this, is just going to Google, Google images or whatever, just run a search, find an image and import that into Canva. The reason why you shouldn't do this is because most of these images are actually protected. Like they belong to someone. They belong to a photographer, to a website, to a company, to someone. You know, it's not just like randomly appeared on Google. So uh, by all means, like don't grab and, and drop images that you find online directly into your Canva presentation because you will be infringing copyrights, agreements, copyright laws or whatever. So uh, I believe there is enough choice for you within Canva, or if, if you don't find what you're looking for, if it's very specific, you can always upload your own or go and visit special like um, stock library or Im image library. And there, like you can use those that are actually uh, free to use. All right. So I just uh, thought I would mention that because I've seen this done and I've done it as well. So I uh, feel guilty here. Like it's not like it's, it's not a big deal, but it's something you should, as you become more professional with your presentations or with your work, you should avoid doing. All right. I uh, hope everybody's doing fine here. Let's, uh, let's continue. So I have a few tips uh, to remain consistent in a few tips to, yeah, to, to, to keep your visuals uh, very coherent with the rest of your presentation. So uh, for your visuals, you should always remain consistent, meaning try to come up with a theme. Uh, a theme, for example, means you will apply the same style to your visual. So you've seen, I've demonstrated the style I used for this presentation by using, uh, by cutting the background of the photo using the background remover, but then also by applying a duotone effect, always the same, the pop one, the purple and uh, so the pink and, and purple uh, color effect. Um, so that is one way, or you could go grayscale for your photos and maybe with some bright, rectangle overlay on top of which you would position your text. There are different ways you could use. Uh, and also you could start browsing the different Canva templates because they have been designed by professional designers. So all of this research, if you want, has been done for you. Me, I decided to create from scratch because I actually enjoy the process of creating. I feel like, oh, I can do it because Canva allows me to do it. It's easy enough for me to do it. Um, but yeah, remaining consistent means having like uh, keeping your style of effects of images. If you're using a background, no background. If you are using icons, for example, is it hand drawn? Is it like more like plain icons with some colors inside? Is it like a straight outline type of icon? These types of details will make a difference. Like if you keep all of this consistent, it will add to the professionalism of your presentation. Uh, the second point is to make them big, okay? So remember you are designing from the, for the guy over there at the back of the room. I know today it's mostly uh, online, uh, things are happening online, but still like some people might be following this webinar on their smartphone. So they have a smaller screen, a smaller device. So therefore your, your elements, your visuals on your slide should be big enough so that everybody can really understand what they are and, and, and see what they are. So make them big. Uh, the third thing for your visual, visual, sorry, is to avoid cheesy stock images. So we've all seen the corporate photo with the African guy, the Asian guy, and then the white guy, and then another person. Uh, and, and that is quite cheesy. So I would just like uh, recommend you to stay away from the cheesiness of certain stock images and photos. I think Canva is doing a pretty decent job at having some uh, diversity in our library. So, uh, I mean, uh, what I was implying is that it's good to have like, to represent visually uh, different types of people and skin tones and everything, but avoid the cliches. That's what I'm saying here. And historically, typically a lot of the stock, stock images are still pretty cliche. So we are really working hard with partnerships with different photographers and like selecting and handpicking artists and contributors 
who are creating for the Canva library to get to this level of quality of the content. And, and I think we are really on the right track here. So I think Canva is by far better than a lot of other stock images and stock image library I've seen out there. Uh, but just, I thought I would remind you to stay away from the cheesy corporate images. And the fourth thing I could say about using visuals is that you will want to find high resolution images. Okay, there's nothing worse than your presentation looking very pixelated. And unless this is the style you're going for, you don't want your slides to look like a 1990 video game. Unless, again, this is the style. So it's there's actually a style called retro pixel. So this is a style. But unless you're going for this, try to yeah find high resolution images. And again, Canva gets you, uh, has you sorted for that. All right. Uh, mistake number three is to avoid crap quality. This one is pretty straightforward. So avoid poor quality slides uh, because I believe nobody wants to stand there and watch your crappy slides. So um, nobody likes them. And so because you don't want yourself to be exposed to these poor quality slides, you of course uh, don't want to create them yourself and expose other people to them. You have two choices really. Like if you don't feel confident enough to create your slides, well, you can learn how to do it or you can hire somebody else, right? So this is my second slide here. There are two shortcuts to great design according to Jesse Desjardins, okay? In his original deck, you suck at PowerPoint. Two shortcuts to produce great design. Number one is to buy it, meaning either you pay for a designer to design your slides, which could, which could like pretty quickly become quite expensive depending on where you live and depending on how much slides. Um, buying it also could mean, you know, you buy a template or you buy an expensive tool or expensive photos or whatever, like, but you, you purchased elements of the design or the, the finished design. Um, and the second one is to steal it. What does it mean by stealing design? Well. Uh, it means that you will, you will look at some good design, you, you will look at some awesome presentations, and then you will deconstruct them. You will take them apart element after element. You will figure out how they were created. So this is really like the, what it means by stealing it, because they're, like the best way to learn design is to be exposed to good design. It's just like the best way to learn a language is to go to the country and, and start speaking and be surrounded by it. So if you, if you surround yourself with good design and if you make the effort of deconstructing how they were made, then you will learn how to build it yourself. Uh, so that's his take, two shortcuts to creating great design. I would add a third shortcut to creating great design. And that would be to start with a Canva template. Okay, I think this is something that didn't exist a few years ago, but Canva now has an amazing template library, especially when it comes to presentation. So this is my next slide here, my next demo. Let me uh, go back to my presentation here with the rolling doggy. Um, I want to show you Yes, and for this, I can do this from the beginning here, the home page. So this is the Canva home page. I really want to show you that you can go into the templates tab right here and show you how big and the scope of the library in terms of presentation templates. So just type in presentation and then you will land on this uh, beautiful landing page here with all of Canva's presentation templates. And what I love about it is that you can search, you can filter by colors, but also you have all these tabs that kind of represents categories of templates. So simple education, marketing, professional brand guidelines, creative, etc. It goes like it goes on. So one of my favorite one, and I, that's why I'm being served all of these ones. Uh, these are visual representation. So data visualization templates. Uh, I love these ones because they have all of these um, uh, sketches and drawings and charts and timelines. So I, I personally love these. It's super useful for me 
working at Canva and building strategies and decks and stuff. And so I use this all the time. But if your thing is more uh, like you want to create a pitch deck, so Canva um, um, has you sorted for this as well. Like you, you will find here a good selection of pitch decks. So like starting with a template will basically allow you, let me come back here. Uh, it will allow you to start from the work of, um, yeah, a professional designer who has made the heavy lifting for you. You don't have to, to create this consistency between the text and the colors and the layouts because all of that has been done for you. So it's really hard to create a bad presentation if you start from a Canva template and you kind of follow the template. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. Now moving on uh, to fonts. So typography, and one of the quickest way to produce beautiful design is to use beautiful fonts, okay? Uh, fonts are really important to produce these beautiful presentation, these impactful presentation. Sometimes a slide with a simple background and just one word with the right font could have a lot of impact. Um, so for this, uh, you are seeing here, like what you were seeing is the font uh, panel in Canva to select your fonts. You have thousands of fonts in Canva. Um, so I would really highly encourage you to explore the fonts to uh, start working with your favorite ones, figuring out how to pair fonts together. So uh, searching for contrast, like having a fat font and a thin font, or having a serif font and a sans serif font, or having a bold font and a handwriting font. So all of these combinations, but usually the key word when you're trying to pair fonts is contrast. You want one to be very different from the other, because if you have two fonts that are quite similar, it might be difficult to distinguish what's the difference. Uh, so you are really aiming for contrast when you're pairing fonts. Um, and yeah, we have a ton of uh, blog articles on the Canva website. If you go to canva.com slash learn, you will see a lot of uh, articles about typography, how to pair fonts. Uh, and also one thing that is super useful is that you can search in the, the font uh, search box that you see here. You can type in the exact name of a font, but you can also type in a category of font. If you type in handwritten, uh, handwritten sorry, uh, you will see a selection of fonts that are handwritten fonts. If you type in uh, bold, you will see a selection of fonts that are bold and that are suitable for headlines or titles. Uh, so that's how I personally use the fonts. Also, one more thing I wanted to mention about fonts here is that if you are a Canva Pro user, Canva will allow you to upload your own font. So if you already have a business, you have your corporate font, uh, Canva Pro is probably the best option for you because you will be able to upload that specific font to Canva and you will be able to use that from the editor uh, and apply that to your designs. So that is for typography, which leads me to the fourth design mistake, which is to be all over the place. Remember, it was called something different before. Uh, let's call it all over the place. So what does that mean, that your slides are all over the place? Well, it means that your slides are neither balanced nor consistent. And that's not good. So let's address balance first. OK, so there are three concepts you absolutely need to keep in mind and apply in order to create more balanced slides, okay? And these three concepts is number one, white space. So white space or negative space, uh, I will show you. So this is no white space and this is white space. Again, no white space, white space. So the mistake is that you might think if you're kind of like a newbie designer, oh, I have all this slide. I have all of this good space. Why waste any of it by leaving it empty? I need to fill that space. No, that's a mistake. Like white space or element grouping or negative, creating negative space, all of these are kind of like the same concept. Um, when used correctly, white space will allow you to draw the attention of the viewer to a specific part of your slide. So like this, if I look at this slide, I don't really know where to look first because the title, maybe the paragraph, but like this, then I have uh, created this focus, focal point, focus point on my slide where I want people to start 
reading. Uh, so this is the first of the three things you have to keep in mind to keep your slides balanced. The second one is alignment, right? Alignment is super important. Uh, when alignment is not respected in your design, it seems like your elements are not where they should be. They're not where you would expect to find them. So for, for the more perfectionist among us, like me, uh, if you spot a, an alignment mistake on a design, you will be kind of stuck to it. Like you, like you want to correct it, but you can't because it's not your presentation, but you notice it and then you cannot see anything else. Like you see this alignment mistake. Uh, that's a little bit OCD, but I'm kind of like this because I, I, I just like when every, everything is aligned. Uh, so alignment is a big one. And hopefully Canva makes it super really easy to... Um, to align yourself and i'm going to show you this in this um in this next demo here so how to align your stuff in canva so for this let me get back to my demo deck here into the right place which is this one okay so i want to show you a few tips and tricks to make it easier for you to align your elements uh directly working from canva okay so the first one is to show the rulers and guides. Okay, what are rulers and guides? If you go to your file button right here and you see show rulers, show guides, they are already activated. I will deactivate them so you can see how it looks like. So your Canva might look like this, your editor. Uh, but then once you start activating, you show the rulers, you show the guides, and I'm just going to um, remove this tab here. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna close this panel um, and now I have the rulers here on the top and on the left side, and I can drive, I can grab a guide. So you just click on the ruler and then you drag, and then you're bringing this guide. Okay. So this blue line, it's purple or blue, but these are the guides and you can position them where you want. Okay. You can grab them from the top and have horizontal guides or vertical guides. So that's one way to help you align your elements. Then the rest will just snap to the guide and you can make sure like so that all the elements are aligned on this guide right here. So that's one way that you can do this. Another way, like for example, I can select all of this. They're not grouped yet, but you see if I move this group of elements to the edge, towards the edge of the design, I will have this safe zone here, this purple, rectangle, I would say, purple frame. This indicates this is a safe zone. I shouldn't go further than this if I want to be safe. But also, if I position this group towards the middle of my page, I will have a vertical and a horizontal guide or adjustment grid showing, uh, indicating me that this is the, the center um, of the design. So this is another way to assist you. And then finally, what you can do, you can select everything and then you use the position button. This is a bit less known, guys. So pay attention. This is a super trick. Uh, use the position button. And then you can go space evenly. You can space evenly vertically or horizontally. Let's start with horizontally and then vertically. OK. So what it did here is that it added the same distance between each of these bulbs right here. And then there is a last option, which is tidy up. This is the most efficient one, it will just tidy up your slide, adding the same distance between your objects and aligning them and probably positioning them at the middle of your slide. Yes, exactly at the middle of the slide. So these are just a few tips and tricks for you to, um, to align your elements more properly on when you're using and when you're designing with Canva. All right, moving on, uh, consistency, which is the third super important concept to keep in mind if you want uh, your uh, if you want to create this consistency, if you want to create this um, uh, balance on your slides. So consistency, um, it, it consists of different things, all right? Um, it's, it's what will differentiate a good slide deck from a wow deck. So by having this consistency in different different ways, like you can add this consistency using different things will really um, help you make a bigger impact with your presentation. So here in this deck, I try to remain consistent with different, oops, with different elements. First, my font, my typography. 
all of the text uh, is basically made out of two different fonts, Agrandir Black and Beauty Salon Script. Okay, so these are the two fonts I selected. I would recommend you stick to two fonts. Three fonts is still okay, but don't go over three fonts. So use two to three fonts per deck. Uh, the color palette. So I'm using a consistent color palette. You will not see anything except maybe on a photo, but still the photos I apply a specific filter to them. Uh, you will not see anything than these four colors on this deck uh, because this will create the consistency, will create this homogeneity on the entire deck. Uh, so yeah, uh, the font, the typography, the text hierarchy. So how big is your main title on every slide? So mine is Agrandir Black in 90, size 90. And then your subtitle is Beauty Salon Script in, in 70. Uh, and then I have my main text, which is Agrandir in, 30, in 35. So by respecting this text hierarchy, and you can set that up and I will show you this uh, in the next slide. Um, by respecting this, you create a consistency between all of your slides. So figure out the size that works for you, the font that works for you, the colors that work for you. And then before you start designing your presentation, set that up in your brand kit. So that's what we are going to do right now. So that's the next slide. I'm going to one more time switch over to my presentation here and show you how this works. Okay. so. Uh, for this, I'm going to go back to the Canva homepage. Okay, so I'm here on the homepage. I will go to my brand kit. So brand kit, you have two types of brand kit. You have brand kit for free users, which will have limited functionalities. So you'll only have uh, the choice to upload three colors. Uh, you won't be able to upload your custom fonts. But for the rest, you can upload... Um, you can select your text hierarchy and set that up. Uh, that will work. You can upload some of your logos as well, and you can choose up to three colors and only one color palette. Meanwhile, if you're a Canva Pro user, which is what I'm using here, my brand kit will be a little bit more uh, furnished. You will have more opportunities. The main difference is that you can upload more than one color palette. And the number of colors in that specific palette can be more than three. Okay, so I'm going to start with my text. Okay, so if you remember, you would come here, the brand kit, you will be able to um, set your color palette, set your text hierarchy, and this will be translated into your editor, like the choices you have there. So just be aware that this is what I typically do before I start a presentation, even, even though I have already a brand kit set up, you can set up a brand kit temporarily. You can set up your brand kit for a specific project and then go back to the brand kit and change it. Or if you're a pro user, you can create different brand kits and maybe name this one brand kit for my presentation. And this is how you, you do it. All right, so moving on, the next thing you have to take into consideration to create this balance in your slide, to create this consistency is your slides uh, layout. So the composition of your slide is really important. Like if you have your slides organized and structured in a different way for every slide, then it doesn't really look that consistent, right? So uh, for example, you might decide my, my title is gonna come here and then I have one main image and then I have one piece of text. Just, just choose a few layouts like I did in this presentation and stick with them. For example, one thing I've done here um, in this presentation. I think I talk about this later, but I'm using these um, different structures for my, my title slides and my uh, the slide that indicates which section of the presentation we are talking about at the moment. All right, and then the last thing for uh, creating this, this consistency is to use the same photo style and filters. I've mentioned that already. So for example, for the photos, I use the background remover and then I apply the duotone effect. Uh, so this creates um, this creates cohesiveness, smoothness, and a strong visual identity because I'm able to create something which looks and feels consistent. All right. So uh, yes, that's what I was mentioning to you. You see here kind of like a bird's eye view of all the slides in my presentation. And you can see 
like this slide right here is a specific slide layout I'm using to indicate we are moving from one section to the other. Also, I'm using the blue color to indicate this is the first section of my presentation. Now we are moving to the pink color. So that's the second segment of my presentation. So use colors, structure, and layout to, yeah, to bring order to your presentation. This will really add some professional touches to your presentation because people will understand where they are. And this is really what I wanted to show you here with this slide, this quote. Uh, this is a quote from Lyndon Leader. Um, you might not know him. When I will go to the next slide, you, you will understand who he is. But he says, he's a designer. He says, I strive for two things in design, simplicity and clarity. Great design is born of those two things. So it's really about simplicity and clarity. Like your design should make it obvious for people. Like it should simplify the meaning of everything. So this guy is actually the guy who designed the FedEx logo. Um, so yeah, try to remain consistent. Try to have to apply all of these tips uh, in your next presentation. And that is the end of my first section. So uh, I will pause here. We'll see if we have any questions from the audience. And uh, yeah, I'm really open to answering a, a few questions about this first part. Great. So if you have some questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A panel right now and we can surface some with Ronnie. Um, we have been answering a few questions as we've gone through, but we do have one question here from Nick, who was wondering if you have Canva Pro, how many team members can you add to your account? Do you know that, Ronnie? So if you have Canva Pro and you start adding team members to your account, <clears throat> your subscription plan will become more expensive. So per member you add to your account, I think there is no limit to the number of people you can add to your account, but just be aware that you will be charged for every member you add to your pro subscription. You will be charged one more subscription, like one more pro subscription. Uh, and if you are the account owner, if you are the team owner, will be charged to you. So just be aware of that. Another one here, did you choose the color palette first? then choose the duo tone or did the duo tone come from the color palette that's a good question uh, i choose the colors first and then i try to see in the duo tone presets because one thing you should know about duo tone you can completely customize them you can choose any duo tone and then you will see a little slider icon on the duo tone effect itself so if you click on that you can actually change the two colors which I don't recommend doing because these colors to produce a nice effect need to be specific colors, kind of complementary colors, uh, but you can completely customize them. So yeah, the answer is yes, I had my colors first and then I chose a duotone, but I kind of have like a thing for the, the pop duotone. I just love these two colors. So that's kind of also my style. Like I like these colors. Aisha asks, do the animated stickers work well during a live presentation? Yes, they do. This is something I haven't mentioned yet uh, uh, in the presentation, but Canva has a bunch of stickers, you know, animated stickers. When you search for keyword, you can filter uh, animated or still, I believe. Uh, and so if you tick the animated box, you will have a bunch of stickers presented to you. So yeah, they work fine. Just, just uh, be aware that you have to use them sparingly. Like don't put too many moving things. So yeah, I would recommend to use them. And I use them to, to draw people's attention. So I use subtle ones like doodles, uh, hand-drawn doodles or little, little like stuff going like this. So I use that to, to attract the eye of the viewer to a specific keyword on my slide or visual. Okay, fantastic. And um, we've got another question. How do we make it concise if we have to present a lot of numbers like sales without pasting the tables? Yes, I think it really comes down to what is the message you are trying to communicate. So let's say you are in a sales team and you, uh, you want to present the data. And at Canva, it's something we do quite regularly, not in the sales team, but uh, try to, to see what piece of information is actually relevant to your audience. Is it the fact that you increase sales by 10%? That is the case. If that's the information that will get people to resonate with, uh, that's what you should illustrate. But I don't think it is necessary to bombard your audience with 
all the data. So that's basically what I was saying about keeping it short and sweet. You know, like you have to analyze your information and see what is the essence of what I'm trying to communicate with this slide. Is it that my sales went up for uh, from 2020 to 2021 by 10 percent? If that's the case, then then represent that. Unless it's really like you need to present all the data and all the the things, but I think there are some more adequate format to present this type of information than a presentation, maybe a PDF file, maybe sending an Excel spreadsheet or a Google sheet uh, would be more convenient for this purpose. But in a presentation, I would focus on the key message you want to deliver with your slide. All right. Thank you, Jess. And thank you for your questions. By all means, keep them coming. Uh, I'm always happy to, that's my favorite part of the of the presentation is to answer your question. So let's continue. Let's continue to section two, and that is how to create wow slides. What are the rules to design eye-catching presentations? Let's just uh, step back a bit and, and put yourself in this situation. When you visit a website, when you visit a Facebook page or even an Instagram account, within a few seconds, you will form your first impression of that particular venue you are visiting, right? That particular account, that particular website. Uh, so this first perception of your business or your social media presence, that is your brand, okay? So there is a lot of definitions of what a brand is, but this perception that somebody has the first time they stumble upon you uh, or a piece of content you've created or your website, these fractions of seconds, that is your brand. What is this perception that you transmit? So how do you control, how do you influence that first impression? So it sure isn't your content because in a fraction of a second or even two seconds, I haven't had the time to read your landing page. So it's not your content. It's not your copy. In two seconds, I didn't get a chance to read that. So what will forge my first impression is actually your visuals. The look and feel, the perception, the impression I get when I log on to your website, when I visit your Instagram account, I just glance uh, at it. That's, that is really your visuals. So let's talk about this overall design, the colors that you use, the style of your text, the mood that your visuals convey. All of that will influence how I feel about your business the first time I stumble upon it. So this section is really about this visual branding, why it's important and how to apply this in your presentation so that your slides can wow your audience. So these are my seven things to consider for creating wow slides. Number one, which is really important, is to stick to one main idea per slide. This is super important. I would much rather prefer you create a 100 slide deck than to have 10 slides and five ideas per, per slide. If you want to communicate efficiently and communicate visually in, a, in an efficient manner, uh, keep it simple. So one main idea per slide, stick to that. That will make it easier to grasp for everyone. Also remember that your slides are a visual support to what you are actually saying. Okay, so there should therefore not contain a lot of text because the hero of this whole adventure is you, the presenter, not your slide. All right, so next um, is my second tip is to, it's not the second tip, it's actually to, to keep it uh, one main idea per slide, you will have to cut your text to a bare, a bare minimum. So you don't want a lot of text on your slide. We've talked about this, avoid bullet points. These are pretty boring. Keep that for uh, Google Docs. Um, the idea is to have a visual representation of the concept or the point you're trying to illustrate or you are talking about on a specific slide. Okay, so tech, cut the text to a bare minimum. Also make them visual. Okay, making them visual, we've talked about this, selecting the right photos, videos, GIFs, whatever. Canva offers you millions of options right here. So try to make them visually appealing so that you can catch your audience's attention so that they are more open to receiving your message, the things that you are trying to express, communicate. Uh, so one thing I, I always try to do is to, to find a connection, even if it's a subtle one, even if it's an unconscious connection, 
um, sometimes very obvious when like delivering big punches, you have someone actually punching you in the face. But having this connection, this visual connection helps you make a link between what you hear from the presenter and what you see on the slide. So that is super important. So um, Canva has millions of high quality photos, graphics and videos. So tap into that library of goodness uh, and create and also try to create movement. You see, so for example, I think it was Aisha asking um, how to uh, how to use the stickers. So you see this, uh, it's moving, it's subtle, but there's something moving the camera, it has these little stars. So that's how I typically would add and use the stickers. Uh, so yeah, make them move and add some movement into the slide so it attracts the, the attention. Uh, make them bold, big and bold, because again, like you're designing for the guy at the back of the room or the person watching on the smartphone. So it needs to be big enough. A good rule of thumb uh, that I follow is that I don't use anything smaller than 30 points for my fonts. So if you're using any text, don't go smaller than 30. That is your font size. Uh, yeah, don't go any, any, anywhere smaller than that. Uh, remain consistent. That speaks for itself. Like uh, try to create this consistency between all of your slides. Uh, colors, style, we've talked about this. Uh, yeah, so the same thing. So one color palette, one imagery style, two or three fonts. I think we've covered that pretty extensively. Uh, respect alignment and empty space. I've already talked about this as well, but this is super important to, to continue to respect uh, because yeah, these are the design fundamentals. If you follow them, you're pretty much you're safe. If you use a Canva template, you are also pretty much safe. Uh, if you feel confident enough to start from scratch, then make sure uh, your, your elements are aligned, your, you, you're leaving enough white space or breathing space so that it's not overcrowded and feels like, oh, there's too much on this slide. And then uh, selecting the right aspect ratio. This is something important, but how do you select the right dimension, the right document dimension to create slides? Well, Canva makes it easy for you because you have three types of presentations in Canva. The classic one is basically the full HD one. So that's 1920 by 1080 pixels, okay? So that's the video size. <clears throat> if you upload a video on YouTube, that would be your, 19, uh, your 16 by nine aspect ratio. And that is the typical, I would say, format for presentation. Why is that? Because today, most presentations are either displayed on a laptop computer or broadcasted on, on a TV. Okay, so you have your TV connected to your computer and you, you broadcast or you screen screencast this to your TV. So the 1920 by uh, 1080 pixel of the 16 by nine aspect ratio is the most popular one. If you are to present your presentation on the go, for example, you want to present it from your smartphone. Well, Canva has some specific format for this as well. It's not the 16 by 9, but it's reversed. So it's the 9 by 16. And you can find a lot of templates by uh, typing in mobile first presentations in Canva. If you type mobile first presentations, you will find a bunch of templates that are actually optimized to be seen on a smartphone. And then there is a third format, which is um, the four by three aspect ratio. So that is mostly suitable for iPads and tablets. So uh, if you intend to present your presentation, maybe in a cafe to a friend or an investor or a friend investor, if, if you have some of those, uh, then you might want to present that on your iPad and therefore you can still choose this format. It will be less wide. So four by three is less wide than the, the 16 by nine. So yeah, just uh, for you to consider like choosing the right aspect ratio. Also, if you are a pro user, Magic Resize lets you easily resize your presentation from one format to another or various others. So this is something you can also consider. All right, so these are my seven tips to create wow slides. I have prepared a few slides here if you want to go deeper, okay? So the first thing 
This is a QR code. I think by today, everybody knows what to do with the QR code. You point your camera of your smartphone towards the QR code. What it will do, you will access this presentation. So all of these slides, if you find them useful, you can go back to them later and just review the concept I've been walking you through. Uh, so just point the, the, the camera of your phone to this QR code, you will see my presentation on your smartphone. So you can go back to it later. Uh, so that's the first thing. The second thing I have here listed a few books uh, that I've read most of them. Um, and I found interesting for people who want to get better at either delivering presentation or creating presentation. I particularly like the first book here. It's called Steal Like an Artist uh, by Justin Cleon. Uh, this is a really cool book. It's super, like I said, page turner. It's very graphical. It's very visual. Uh, and it's a small book. It's a book like this. So I like this one because there's a lot of really cool concepts for artists uh, and designers. And Talk Like Ted, Talk like, like Ted sorry, is also a very cool uh, book, mostly to help you with your speaker presentations, uh, sp speaker presentation skills, sorry. Um, all right, and a few videos on YouTube also, like since now you have scanned the QR code and you have access to the presentation, you can actually watch them from here. I've used, um, I've used Canva's embed functionality. So if I click play here, the video starts to play. So you can have a look at these videos as well. There's one from Ted and this guy is actually the guy who coined the term death by PowerPoint. So he explains what it means and how to fight it. Uh, there is a video from the future, which is a design channel. And there's a video that I made uh, for Canva um, which talks about yeah the new presentation features. That is if you want to go deeper. Also, because I uh, really appreciate it, because this basically changed my life. This is the slide deck that I was mentioning to you uh, earlier in the presentation by Jesse Desjardins. And again, I have uh, it is embedded here in the presentation. So I, I really like this feature of in embedding rich media in Canva. You see. It is in my presentation, but I can skip through his slides on my presentation. So this is an embed from Skillshare, and that is Jesse's uh, famous presentation, You Suck at PowerPoint. I highly recommend you flip through these pages because this is gold. Well, that is the end of section two. So I'm ready for some more questions. If we have some, Jess, otherwise I will continue. We do have a few questions. Do you ever think about adding any low volume music to your presentation? Interesting. Uh, actually, no. I do so when I create tutorials. We always have some background music for presentation. Actually, no. I think it's because, you know, during a presentation, there's a lot going on already. And it's better if you have the full attention and no distraction. I think adding music would be one more source of distraction that might not be necessary uh, because you really want the attention to be on you when you present. But that's my personal take. Maybe <clears throat> maybe you like it. I, I like having uh, a little music at the beginning so it makes people feel good and like it creates a vibe. So I really like that. But when I speak, not so much. Question from Nana Adi. <clears throat> How much white space should we allocate on a slide, but at the same time not making it too empty? That's a good question. Uh, I don't re I don't have a proper rule to give you. This is really subjective. Uh, it depends on your slide. It depends on the message you're trying to convey. So there is no particular rule. I think one rule that I always respect is that I make sure I stay within the safe zone. Don't position any elements outside of this purple square, it's not a square, but this purple frame that Canva indicates as the safe zone, because then you get too close to the edge and this might feel awkward. This might feel like, oh, it's too close to the edge. Um, so that's one rule. Um, for the rest, there's really no rule. So it really depends. If you really want to bring the attention to one specific visual or word, or small amount of text, then you might want a lot of white space and this, and, and, and therefore you're sure people will look at this. Maybe you use color also to accentuate where people should look at, but 
there is no rule really. Okay, thank you. Um, Sue asks, do you have any tips for creating cool transitions between slides? That's a good question. Actually, I don't really, I'm not a big fan of adding fancy transitions. Canva lets you do that, definitely. So you have a lot of animations that you can use on your slides to like for, for the elements or for the, the entire slide in general. Uh, me personally, I like to keep it really simple and I like to have control of my deck. So I'm controlling my deck with my keyboard arrows. I have a keyboard here and uh, I always have my fingers on the arrows and because I like to go back and forth. So I would recommend you have a clicker or you have a keyboard, but I would recommend you definitely control your slides. Uh, and I like to have no transitions, but sometimes I do stuff like this one. Let me go back to a particular slide. I think it was these. So I have, if you see the same slide like three times, but I just uh, highlight or I just use the pink color on different words. So basically how I did this, I copied the slide three times and then I changed the pink word to be the second one and then the third one. So I create this effect like I'm speaking about one, two, three. So that's a small tip I could give you. But uh, yeah, in terms of transition, I really like to keep it, keep it simple when I edit videos as well. You might want to save this one to the end. I'll let you choose on this one, Ronnie. But Jessica has asked, of everything that you've presented so far, what is the most important thing that you would select out for a good presentation? OK, that's a really good question. Like the essence of this presentation, what is it? Um, for me, it's, it's really like stick to one main idea per slide and cut the text to the minimum. So that's really for me, keep it sweet and short. That's the key for presentations. And that's what's been working for me. I've delivered a lot of presentations in person, webinars. And if you see these slides, they are pretty simple. I mean, they are efficient, like too much information on your slides. It comes back to this visual. I, I, I like this visual. I, I, I had fun finding this one and making it. Let me find it, kind of this one. Wait. Yes. So you don't want to have slide like this. It's too much going on. You don't know where to look. And yeah, it just doesn't work. So keep it short and simple. That would be my main tip. Okay, sure. We've just had another one pop in from Janissa, who's wondering um, the way that you did those pink highlighted words. Is it possible to have a transition between those words on one slide instead of slides transitioning between slides? Mm. I don't think so. Not with the current features not that I'm aware of. But it's really easy to create, like, took me a sec, like, not a second, maybe five seconds. You just duplicate your slide two times, and then you have three slides with the same text. Just change the color from one word to the other, and then click this. Like, when you get to this part of your presentation, you just skip through them. Like, you yeah, swipe from one to the other. I don't think there is a way to do it um, in only one slide. So now we have kind of covered all the theory, all of the... Yeah, the information, I just want to show you more stuff. Uh, so I'm going to jump back into Canva. So yeah, forget PowerPoint, meet Canva. Uh, I want to show you and demo how you can present directly from Canva. So for this, I'm going to go back to my presentation here. Okay, so this one is called demo. So how do you present? Well, you have a big present button here. So you will click on that. And then you will have three choices. You have standard, autoplay, presenter view. The standard is just, it's just going to broadcast your current screen. And it will be full screen and you will just see your slides. Autoplay, you can set a duration for every slide and Canva will just go through them. If you select 10 seconds, 30 seconds, that's what Canva is going to use as the amount of time spent per slide. So that is if you have a very like um, very well uh, prepared presentation and you know exactly you're going to spend one minute per slide, you can set that on autoplay and forget about it. I would personally never do that, uh, but that's an option. And then we have present a view here, which is what I'm using right now. You don't see it, but I have my presenter views right here and I have a secondary screen with what you are seeing right there. So presenter view, click here, I will show you what happens. So you see now I have two windows. I have this one window right here 
and I have the other window right there with my presenter notes. I'm going to move this one slightly to the bottom because I want to show you how presenter notes actually work. So if I skip through my presentations, now you kind of see the, the behind the scene of how this is done. So uh, I have my slide here and I have my presenter notes and I can really like, so be aware that I have another screen. I, I push my presenter window, which is somewhere here still, um, to, to the bottom of my, or to my other screen. And now I'm, I'm just navigating my presentation. I still see uh, my slides, but I have my notes. And so this is super useful. That's what I've been doing with you guys. I have a little bit of slides, a little bit of uh, sorry, slide, uh, information per slide. So that's really up to you, but presenter note is a very cool feature. And from here, also something else I want to show you is that you have some magic shortcuts, you see? So you have this keyboard here, let me make this bigger. Uh, you can use this keyboard to, to see uh, the different shortcuts. So for example, the timer, you can call a timer. Um, yeah, you're not seeing my presenter view, my my um, presenter window. Let me see if I can do that again. So I will present, present like so. Okay, I will keep it here. I won't go full screen. So you have in the background my presenter's notes, and then here what the audience is seeing. So if I use, oh, I cannot do it because I only have one screen here. So I push this to my other screen. So you won't see the back end of it. You won't see the notes, but I want to show you how um, the magic keyboard and the magic shortcut work. Okay, so now, now you should see this window right here, which is again, the, the audience window. So if I use the magic, key, uh, magic shortcuts, for example, the timer, you see, you can call a timer. And uh, the sh the, there are shortcuts on your keyboard for each of these. So if I press the one key, like so, press one key, I have one minute. If I press the two key, I have two minutes, all the way to nine minutes, like so. So that's one of the shortcuts. There are lots of other shortcuts. For example, if you press C, you have confetti. If you press D, you have a drum roll. If you press O, you have some bubbles coming up. If you press Q for quiet, and if you press uh, B for blur, you blur the background. So that's kind of what I want to show you with the presenter view right here. I'm gonna bring back my original setup here. All right, so um, this is how you present directly from Canva. I found this super useful you will need some kind of a second screen to, for this to work in the best conditions, because otherwise you've seen like it's a little bit of a, uh, you need to find the right space to, to project your audience window. But typically the way you use this, you will have, uh, if you do a webinar like me, I have my laptop in front of me. I have an iPad or a secondary screen on the side where I will drop my audience view windows. And then in front of me, right next to my camera, which is there, I will have my presenter notes. So that's the presenter view of Canva with my notes. And how do you add your notes? So let me show you. See, so this is a particular slide. I can click here Oops, on the bottom, you see notes. So you click here and you can add notes here. You can add up to 2000 characters per slide. So you can just copy paste. If you have a, a text document, you, you copy paste your different notes here, and these will show in your presenter view window. So super useful. I use this all the time when I deliver webinars. I know the entire team uses that. Uh, when you teach online, you can do this as well. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. Let me go back to the slide here. So how to present directly from Canva. And the last bit of this webinar is how do you share your presentation with the rest of the world? So how did I create this QR code? And how can you actually share your presentation with your audience? Maybe you've, you've delivered, you've worked a long time on this deck, you're proud of it, and you want to share it with the rest of the world. So let me show you how to do this 
Okay, so think bigger, the world is your audience. So for this, again, I will close the notes section. Okay, so now I have just my slides here. Okay, all of my slides. What you will do, <clears throat> you can use the three little dots right here at the top uh, right corner of your screen. So you click here and you will find present. Uh, so no, not present, sorry. Present is what I just did right here. It's the same as this big button. Uh, you will find share as a website, okay? So if you click here, you can actually create a website from your presentation. And we have different types of websites. So the first one is presentation. So that's what I shared with you that you scan via my QR code. So presentation will be, you can flip from one slide to the other and you will just go through all my slides, just like I would flip through my presentation. The second option you have for your website is to have a scrolling website. So let me show you what that looks like. So scrolling, I will open this as a website. And now this is my presentation. I can scroll and it's basically my presentation became a website and I can just, I'm just scrolling here with the wheel of my mouse and I can scroll through my entire presentation. So, okay, going back up. If I want to share this, what I do is that I will copy this URL. Okay, just copy this entire URL right here. Um, and go back to my Canva presentation. And so how do we create this QR code? So this is where the magic will happen. You have to go through uh, the three little dots right here that says more on the left side panel. If you are a bit troubled because the panel is not extended, that's how it should look like. Just be aware that you can always collapse this panel like so. Then you click back in it and it comes back. So the three little dots, click here, and then you'll find a QR code icon. Click here, and then I'm going to paste. If you remember, I copied the URL of my scrolling website that I just created with Canva before. So I'm gonna paste my URL and I'm going to generate a code. So there we go. So now if somebody scans this code, they will land on the, the website that I, uh, I just created, okay? so this website right here. So this is super useful. I've been using this like very often. So this uh, has helped me kind of like blow people's mind when I was presenting because I present, they like it, they want to, they want, they want the slides. So hey Ronnie, where can you send us your slides? So yes, you can scan this QR code and they have all the slides. And it's a website, it's easy to scroll. Um, or you can choose the presentation style. There are other options if you export as a website. So let me go back to it and show you the other options. You have classic navigation. You will have some tabs on the top of your screen and each of the page of your website will be a different tab. So I wouldn't recommend that for like, like very long and lots of pages, decks or presentations because you have so many tabs. So don't like forget this option for this purpose. Uh, and standard also have like a single page with the navigation bar. Anything that has a navigation bar is no, not really suitable for presentations because they would have too many pages. So stick with the scrolling or the presentation website. So that's my final tip, I would say, for you to kind of impress your audience, to wow your audience. Once you're done with the delivery, have a QR code or share the link maybe with your list of attendees, like you can share a link to your scrolling website, your presentation website. You can use a URL shortener like bit.ly to, uh, make, this, um, to make this uh, URL a little bit more user-friendly. Um, but yeah, that's uh, the last thing I wanted to show you today. I think we are at the 90 minute mark. So what I will do, I will stop here and take some uh, last minute questions you might have. And then I have this little gift that I promised you at the beginning of the of the webinar, and uh, and we will wrap the, the webinar up. We absolutely do have some questions. Okay. Yep. Um, Suda asks, can we have different brand kits for different projects? Okay. So at the moment, uh, the answer is no. Whether you are pro or free, you can have one brand kit, but you can create within your brand kits. If you're pro, you can create multiple color palettes but just a color palette. You won't be able to change 
the font hierarchy uh, within the brand kit. But it's super easy to uh, change your brand kit before a specific project. But I, I think we might get there. Like pro users might have access to multiple brand kits at some point. Uh, but as of today, I don't think this feature exists. Uh, so my recommendation, if you have different needs in terms of brand kit, is that you switch your color palettes because you can create multiple ones and have like all these color palettes directly in your, in your brand kit in the editor but you will have to stick with the same font or you can basically tweak your brand kit at the beginning of your project and then come back to your main brand kit. If you know the name of your font and your number, it's just like really three pieces of information to jot down on a piece of paper. You know that the name of your font and the size for one, two, three. And uh, yeah, but I think we will get there for pro users. Um, Yuki wonders, would you ever use a mind map slide in your presentation? Mind maps could be useful. We have some really cool templates for these as well. Uh, yeah, it really depends what you are talking about, how you want to deliver your information. For me, there's no taboo, no, there's no frontier to what you can create with your presentation. I'm really all about creating an experience with my presentations, with my content. So by all means, if you can take your audience on a journey with you and create a mind map and like really offer them an experience by all means like try it yeah all right one last question so we've got time to share some links before we go um does canva have any audience interaction tools I wonder if we could mention canva live yes there is something called canva live okay so how does that work what am i sharing at the moment okay i'm sharing this so maybe i will bring this window whoop, to the screen so you can see this Okay, now you see the back end of my presenter note. So that's presenter view, okay? When you are in presenter view, you will see this. And here you will see a tab called Canva Live, okay? So I can start a session. I can start a new session. And then your audience, you should invite your audience to go to canva.com slash live, I believe it is. Let me see. Start a session. Yes, canva.live. So if you all go to canva.live and you use this code, maybe just you can write the code in uh, the chat. So it's 672951. Yeah, I see people joining now. We have five people. Yeah, we have Lexi. Oh, hi, Lexi. That's Lexi from the Champions. Nice to see you here. Um, yeah, we have eight people. So yeah, you can start typing stuff here. Uh, I think we can also have some questions. I can add questions, stuff like that um, directly in Canva Live. So this is the interaction features. So the way it works, you need to be in presenter mode. You uh, start a new Canva Live session and then I can start like, I can, for example, say, hey, Lexi, how are you doing? And then I feature her uh, profile here. If I have a question, uh, for a specific from a specific person you can uh, also do that you see you have like these different options uh, to interact with your audience and i believe you can create polls and stuff like that um, let me see how we do this display bigger delete message yeah i'm here on my small screen so i'm not exactly sure how to start questions but interacting with live i think it's either coming that you can have polls and ask questions to the audience. For now, it's just like the audience can ask a question and I can see their question. And if I want to answer them, for example, here, great presentation, Jess. I don't know if it's you, Jess, if it's another Jess, but I can acknowledge this comment and say, hey, thank you, Jess. I'm glad you liked the presentation. Or if you have a question, uh, so let's say this, like somebody types a question, and I will highlight it and answer it. So I can show you really how you can leverage Canva Live. So I'm just keeping an eye on the comments right here. So the, the next question that pops up, I will answer it. Okay, so Lexi is asking, oh wow, that eliminates the need to have StreamYard and similar programs, thank you. Yes, uh, definitely, I think we are getting there. Like we are getting to this place with Canva where you can actually live stream and do all of this stuff without having to, to deal with other platforms. Um, 
so yeah, I believe we are gradually getting there. Um, and yeah, so that's it for me, guys. So thanks again, Ronnie. And we yep, look forward thank you. to seeing you all at the next Canvas Space webinar. Yep. Thank you all. Bye-bye.